the team from up north is toying around with one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. Let's point and laugh at him. Next on Locked On Cubs. Our Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy, and this is Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please support the show and be a part of the Locked On Cubs community by following and subscribing on all audio platforms. And you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Sam and I are lifelong fans taking our passion into a discussion with you. On all things Cubs. The Cubs on Friday night signed Edwin Rios to a one year, $1 million deal. Rios is a 28 year old third baseman who could also rotate at DH, played parts of four seasons with the Dodgers, never appearing in more than 32 games in a single year, either due to remaining in the minors or injury. However, his numbers in those small stints, Sam, are promising with 20 home runs and 291 trips to the plate. First reactions and impressions of Enwood Rios as the table gets larger at third base for the Cubs. My first reaction was, die for that loose ball. We're down two because I was at your game. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, when that dropped, I almost was going to wave you over mid-game and say, hey, we might have to do a live show. The Cubs just signed Mike Schmidt. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I definitely don't hate it. It, it. it reminds me a lot of the Fran Mill Reyes signing in the sense that this team really feels like they have a hole at, at the slugging category. And so you take a shot at this guy, like you said, he's never played a full year, but every time he plays, he, he hits. I mean, I have his numbers right in front of yeah. me in his very brief, as you said, 260 at bat career. He has a slug of almost 500 um power you know, upside yeah so so a lot of upside with power um you know he's an older guy you know it, it, it's a, it's a very wisdomy type signing as well mm -hmm. you know later in his in his late 20s trying to catch lightning in a bottle with a guy that could hit some home runs the, the the question is is what does this mean for the other 263 third baseman we have <laughs> is you know is is does this hurt magical mckinstry i i think i think we've both kind of come to the conclusion that Morrell probably isn't in that mix right now and he's more in the outfield mix as the fourth outfielder so you got wisdom McKinstry magical now you throw Rios in this bunch there's no way he's gonna have to play any first base when you have Mancini and Hosmer there right 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 and then possibly obviously later in the year Mervis we know Bellinger could play there so it feels like a third base move. You know, will he start the year in the minor leagues? I don't know. You know, I, I'll have to listen to what Jed says. That would give us a much better indication of it. But you're at you're adding a guy that that if he played a full year will probably hit 25 home runs. I don't know what the rest of the numbers look like, and and they need some of those guys. Yeah, I, I like the move. It was clear that he was holding out for a major league deal, and the North Siders did that. Um, one of the biggest concerns I would have is just the bat to ball skills. Of course. High strikeout rate, but there is a lot of upside. And at triple A last year, in in you know, a longer stint or more regular playing time where he actually can get off the ground, um, his on base numbers were were fine. You know, and his walk rate was actually a little bit better than fine. What were his triple A numbers last year? Do you do you have those? No, it was, but it was a slash line, you know, average in the 280s, on base oh. in the 340s. I could pull those up. Um, walk rate was seven or eight percent. Um, yeah. so he's he's a good player, he's he's performed in the lower levels of this game. It's just about, or is it about getting that opportunity at the big league level? Because the Cubs. You know, I, I get a little bit of deja vu with this conversation just because of the team that he arrives from. And right. one of the guys in this group is McKinstry. And 
Sure. I still remember doing that live when McKinstry was traded for Chris Martin and saying, well, maybe McKinstry just needs an opportunity. I'm not sure, but but Rios has only played 32 his season high big league ball games in a year is 32. That that's just a, a little over a month's worth of games. That's not anything at all. Yeah. Um, so perhaps a a solid stint at this level and and a possible platoon with Patrick Wisdom is is the the appropriate move for him and the move that's gonna potentially jumpstart his career at the highest level because from what I'm seeing he Rios is a solid defender at third and when you look at the the group of five and maybe you include Miles Mastro I'm calling him now well yeah uh, no, it's, it's too early for lunch as a potential sixth uh you know we, we did project Morel in outfield like you said but but wisdom and Rios are the clear front runners in my mind and yeah, and, and I really think similar. that with with that being the biggest question mark right now on the field, you have to go with a platoon. And not only could it be a righty-lefty split, because Rios hits from the left side, right? but maybe it's based on that day's starting pitcher related to the pitch type or the pitch location, because both dudes have a lot of power. Yeah. And they and they needed a little an, another left-handed bat with some with some pop. Uh, I'm just his so his minor league num, num, his minor league numbers last year were fine, um, 260, 339, 492. He's had some really big home run year. I mean, he's been a minor leaguer for for most of his career. For a while, uh, he's yeah. he's had years where he's hit uh, um, 21, 27, 24, 31 um, in the minors. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of home runs. He has over 100 home runs in the minor leagues. Um, so, yeah, it, it, I, I don't think we need to spend much more time on it. I don't want to give this guy too much publicity. You know, we'll see what happens Why? with him. Yeah, you know, you, you're, trying to, you're trying to catch lightning in a bottle with a guy like this. There, there, there's a chance. There's too a chance. much publicity. What does well, that I'm mean? Just, I, I'm just saying, you know, I don't want to act like we just signed a guy that's going to play 150 games. He's a nice piece. He could, that's he true. Could, he could he be. He might start the year at AAA because he has a minor it, league option left. He could be. He could play ten games this year for the Cubs. He could be, right. you know, a, a huge breakout star. We don't know. It's it, it's it's worth a try. They need the power. That's there, there's a little bit on that. third base to continue what you said a, a few minutes ago. Yeah. Again, the roster still has to shake out, and and Madrigal is getting. I would say he's getting some a love about. He's his getting a serious change. look. He's getting okay, a serious yeah. look there. Serious look. People are warming up to it. I get, I, I mean, here, seeing quotes from David Ross about Madrigal <laughs> at third and, and, and him making throws across the infield diamond. And, but, but, but this Rios move to me increases the likelihood, at least from my side of the glass, that Madrigal begins the year in Des Moines. Now, maybe him and Rios begin the year in Des Moines. I don't know. But, but, but why would Madrigal beat out a player like Rios? You know, because, you're going to do a wisdom Madrigal split? Well, because I mean, wisdom, please. Because wisdom and Rios are have identical profiles, um, whereas Madrigal and wisdom have opposite. I, I my thing with Madrigal is I just have to see this guy be above a replacement level hitter for more. I'd than like a to month. see him throw the ball to first base. I I, I think. The Cubs are. I I, I think it's a totally Madrigal, different throw. I'm not even joking around. No, it's I a know totally that. different throw. I, I know you're not joking, but I'm just saying. I think the Cubs are so focused on defense this year that if they're making that move, he must be showing some things at third. My issue is the bat, man. I, I, his bat. You, you right, he's so pedestrian. You pedestrian. If he was pedestrian, I I I, I would take him out for a steak. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he is. I mean the slug, the the guy has to hit 295 to even be pedestrian because he doesn't take walks and he has absolutely no power. Uh, we got to restart so this. I want I want to see him. I want to see him. You know, be an above average or average hitter for a month uh, until I really believe he could be a, a, a sticking point at the major league level because this team lacks power. Nobody in the entire league lacks more power than Nicky Yen. So the Cubs made news on Friday announcing the Rio signing. They also made news on Saturday announcing who is going to compete for the Told you. job and confirming who's going to be in the bullpen. Find out what that is coming up next. 
Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the number one sports book in America. New customers join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. This is all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of Locked On Cubs. Welcome back into Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Cubs manager David Ross. Yeah, he did. Announced at Sloan Park on Saturday that Adbert Alzali and perhaps a bigger highlight for us on the program, Keegan Thompson, our officially relief pitchers in 2023. That I'm Both. sorry, I, I have to cut you off. I have Please to. Do. I know you're going to do ahead. that. I have to. Because if I don't say it right now, I want you to finish everything. That right there is a small thing, but confirms to me that this team is serious in 2023. Because if they weren't, they would do, oh, we're going to see about Keegan, see if we can develop him. No, you're great in a two, three inning stint, and that's what you're going to do this year. And the way Ross said it was great. He knows his role. He's prepping for it. That's all. Go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Well, why in your mind is that is that a huge thing in terms of confirmation that they want to be good? Okay, I'll explain again. You and I had a little argument. Remember last week, you said there's a chance that Keegan Thompson could be a fifth starter, right? And I, and if you remember, I kind of right. got a little upset at you for for, yeah, even you did. Insin- yeah. for even insinuating that because the reason why is we now have a large enough sample size to know that it's like an opportunity cost thing in economics. Like Keegan Thompson as a starter versus Samson or Wisniewski, it's basically the same thing. So why would you why would you want a guy like Keegan Thompson there when you move him to the bullpen and he becomes a star? He is a star right. level reliever, and then you have a guy that's probably as good, if not better, than him as the fifth starter. Whoever wins the job, we we have a large enough sample size. Keegan Thompson is not a great starting pitcher. Last year, he showed right. that he has the ability to be an elite reliever. So to answer your question in a couple sentences. Ross kind of saying, hey, we're, 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 we're past the developmental phase with Keegan. We're trying to win right now, so we're going to use him at his best trait. Whereas if they said, hey, we're still sampling with Keegan as a starter, that would show me, hey, we're still just trying to develop guys right now. This is a win-now move, moving him into the bullpen. Yeah, and, and, and here's a look at the bullpen again as of right now. I just think this solidifies the main core of what's going to happen outside of those two spots that, that people are still competing for. And with Thompson and Alzali, this diversifies your options. Oh, because I think is... off a of jump street, they're going to pitch multiple innings. Yeah, I've told you on this show, I wouldn't expect, I'm not, wouldn't be surprised if Alzali was a one inning guy. Um, right. I think he's more, he, I think he could close. Uh, I yeah. really do. But Thompson for sure is pitching two to three innings at a time. Uh, I, I with a lead early five six seven taking us like we said it might be a, a, a situation Steele goes six dominates and Keegan just takes us all the way home. That'd be um, great. No, I'm telling you this. I was really psyched when I heard that. I, I would say it was probably the best news of the weekend because that tells me the Cubs are serious. They've looked at the data and they are trying to to maximize their wins early on instead of. Oh, well, we're going to take a chance on him, and we'll see with him. No, Keegan Thompson. Remember, early in the year last year, he was 6-0 and with like a 1-5-1 one, one out of oh, the pen. Yeah. I remember, yeah. He was arguably their most valuable player. There was some mild all-star chatter. There was some mild all-star chatter, right. And then, then you know, the Cubs stunk, so they're like, hey, we might as well see what we have with this guy as a right. starter. And Extend he was very, out, yeah. very average, very average. And and now he's going back to doing what he does best, and I expect him to generate a lot of wins for this team. No, this is huge. And would you say that that was the highlight for you also personally this weekend? Uh, Yeah, I didn't do much um, as uh, usual. Still single. It's warm today. Maybe that's a highlight for you. I'm going out. I'm going out for a nice steak tonight. It's the second time I've mentioned steak. Uh, okay. Wow. Well. 
so that'll be fun. Um, I'll add that to the bingo card. Sam. Yeah, I'm going to have a nice steak, get it medium. Uh-huh. Uh, the other part of this news is that David Ross name dropped three specific people that are competing for the fifth starter spot. Big news. Uh, there, there might be a couple long shots with non-roster players. Right, but right. The three guys. <laughs> No, I I, so I heard he mentioned that. I was like, yeah. I was rolling my eyes. Okay, if you didn't mention them, they're not right. going to be the guy. Adrian Sampson, favorite, who was the locked on Cubs pitcher of the year in 2022, and the favorite. He's the favorite. Hayden Wisniewski, who who could be the fan most favorite. overlooked prospect in the entire sport, <laughs> and then Javier Assad, who pitched well down the stretch last year. Yeah, it's year not going to be Assad for for the boys in blue. No. Um. I think Sampson is the favorite. Was Nesky highest upside? Assad is going to be interrupted because he's in the WBC as well. It's not uh, going to be sure how that's going to play a factor, but just wanted to mention. Um, but three three good options there. But but now it's clear what the plan is for Wisniewski and Assad because when those guys lose the job, lose in quotes, um, if and when that happens, they're just going to slide it as the one and twos at Iowa, which is fine. Killian is a number three down there. That's yeah. going to be a great rotation. Those guys should start games. I think there's a chance Wisniewski wins it. I don't think okay. it's high, but I think like if I were if I were percentaging it out, I'd say 65, 35, right. something like that. I think there's a ch- if he pitches really well, I don't think he's one of these guys. He's not a project like Killian to where you you're worried about his his mental you know, his, his, the mental part of his game, if he struggles at the big league level, I, I I don't think they're afraid to give him a chance. I just think Samson really earned it last year right. um, and probably deserves it this year. But if, if Samson has a bad spring and Wisniewski has a good one, I think there's a chance that Wisniewski wins that job. But you'll right. see Wisniewski pitching games for the Chicago Cubs big league team at some point this year. I guarantee it. Um, you know, health, health considering. Um but yeah, no, those were good news. Everything that Ross said on Saturday made me happy because it was just focused. We're not toying around. We're not messing around with this. We got our main four guys. I, I do mm-hmm. think the order that he mentioned will not be the order on opening day because he said it was Stroman, Tyone, Steele, Smiley. I think that's the the pecking order, but you, they're going to go right, left, right, left. It's going to be it's going to be Stroman, Steele, Tyone, Smiley in that order. Um, but that doesn't matter. Um, so, so yeah, it was good. I like it. I'm excited. I think Smiley as a four is exactly where he he belongs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think Jamison Tyone. He, he, they're, they're talking about him adding the slider. I'm excited right. to see what he brings to the table. He's a gamer. Any guy that, that pitched really well at Yankee Stadium can pitch for me any day of the week. We know about Stroman. We know about Steele. I like the Thompson news. Good, good stuff so far. Good stuff. Yeah, all good things out of camp so far, and uh, not everybody's even reported yet. That happens on on Monday uh, as you're listening or watching this. So uh, a lot of uh, more storylines and things to keep track of uh, ahead of us. Coming up next to close out, we move across the NL Central to a couple of teams, mainly one up north that has to – Uh, deal now with one of their starting pitchers being upset that's coming up next today's episode is also brought to you by built bar Mm -hmm. looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories then you have to try a built bar for starters they're covered in 100 real chocolate unbelievable flavors like churro peanut butter brownie and coconut almond 130 calories four grams of sugar and a whopping 17 grams of protein. Perhaps you're looking for that jump start or pick me up or finisher to your work day, your school day, or more. How about you do that with Built Bar? For a long time now, we've talked about getting your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can also get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club in the four bar box variety of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. So go to Built.com today or your local Walmart or Sam's Club to pick up a built bar. Welcome back into Locked On Cubs. If you enjoy the show, tell somebody about it and help us spread the word as we're your team every day. Corbin Burns and the Brewers went to an arbitration hearing last week where the Brewers won 
and will pay Burns, their ace pitcher, $750,000 less than he asked for. Uh, This is a pitcher that has been dominant. He posted a 2.94 ERA in 200 and Mm. two innings in 2022. And Burns is upset. He said, quote, there's no denying that the relationship is definitely hurt from what happened, close quote. Sam, what were your thoughts when the news broke on Friday about Corbin Burns? Baffling. I... This is a major league baseball wide problem. The Cubs had some issues with this. It shows you how important money is in this game and how much we overlook ownership because why in God's name would you fight for an extra $750,000 with a guy that right now in the open market per year is worth about 25 million a year? And you're paying them 10.75. In this case, you'd be paying them that just under 11. Whatever it is, you're getting a bargain. And I understand the counterpoint is well, hey, we are the ones that went and got him. We turned his career around. He's still in arbitration. So that's all right as an organization. But sometimes in life, man, especially in business, it's not, it's just about common sense more than what's right. Yeah, technically. That's within your right. But is it really worth – sometimes you just have to pick and choose your battles in business. Right. Is it really worth upsetting, in my opinion, in the last two years, the best pitcher in the National League over $750,000 when when it's he does wild. sign on the open market, if he continues to pitch well, will get a deal – in the you know he'll, he'll get about $150, $60, 70000000 $70 million. It just doesn't make any sense. And I was just enthralled to hear it. Elated. I mean, elated. It was beautiful. That's gonna, you know, I, I know the beautiful. Brewers are I know the Brewers are really good at developing pitchers, but once they lose this guy, it will be the beginning of the end. I, I hope he comes in and kind of struggles early yeah. on just to, you know, shove it at the Brewers a little bit, especially at Wrigley. <laughs> and I really think it was a big deal. And I think it just you know, the the, the the phrase is bad business. It's just bad business. I understand all across the world there's this player empowerment era and the owners and and gms and stuff want to take back power but this not not over that amount of money here you want you're filing for 10.75 take it you deserve it and and we'll see you march 30th at the friendly confines yeah why counter for 10 i don't understand no no it's it's really cheap and you got to remember this is a real hearing so like he's saying that they are giving reasons as to why they should him pay him x amount of dollars and he said in his oh yeah they All were like, the table. yeah, they were like, yeah, they, they, he, they basically blame me for not making the playoffs, which is absurd. It is absurd. That's how about crazy. You, how about you look in the mirror and blame the guy you're paying $170 million to and Yelich that can't hit the ball out of the infield? That's your problem. That's what I would do if I was Burns. I'd get up in the hearing and say, excuse me, your honor. Excuse me. I yeah. would. Yeah. We, we have Christian Yelich. Show the starting team. lineup. Oh, when's the last time he doesn't hit 30 home runs anymore and he's getting paid like he's Barry Bonds. Thanks. I'll, thank you, Your Honor. I'll take a seat. And Edwin Rios is going to hit a, a solo Jackson, the left center, for a one nothing win on the thirtieth against Burns. Oh, you think he's going to be in the opening day lineup and, and take and take Burns deep? Let, let me let me mark that in my notes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Let, let me mark that in my notes of predictions that if they come true, we'll be millionaires. Well, I think Friday is the beginning of the end for the Brewers. Because Burns, Woodruff, and Peralta are all free agents after 2024. And if the Brewers don't get off to a good start this spring and summer, They'll dump I up. think at least one of them is as good as gone. And one of the big questions I have is one or all three of these pitchers going to be gone before opening day 24? Yeah, Or if you want to me- further it, trade deadline 24. They're all in the same timeline. It's very interesting. Yeah, can we not mention their team name by name, please? Oh, that's right. You know, this is this is a serious show, and that's my least favorite team in the division. I, I wow. St. Louis, of course, is up there, but how can you hate a city so much where you just you know stroll around every day? Um, no, no, no. The team from up north, what's going to happen? They're going to get swept on opening weekend. They'll stop. <laughs> wow. they'll, they'll take the drive back up. They'll stop at the broad stops, yeah. get a couple with mustard only, and, and go back to their lives. 
The other piece of information from the weekend was on a uh, former Cubs catcher uh, that is now with the Cardinals. But quite frankly, there's a lot to say about him. And so I don't want to I don't want to wedge it in here at the end. But Ken Rosenthal of The Athletic uh, wrote a column titled I'll just give uh. you the title for now. Wilson <laughs> Contreras determined to silence critics <sighs> with Cardinal. <laughs> That's that was genuine. That was a genuine yawn when that guy's name came up. Wow. So we'll 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 pursue that uh, perhaps later this week. Uh, coming up on Monday, we are pleased to announce that uh, in a similar vein of a Cubs afternoon game, we're going to go live on YouTube at one twenty Monday for the Locked On Cubs Spring Training Party. Um, we're we're kind of using that branding again. We had a lot of success with our holiday party. Uh, it is just going to be Sam and I this time, but locked in, uh, locked on Cubs spring training party, one twenty Monday on YouTube. Um, if you cannot join us live, you can of course um, get the show on the live tab on YouTube. If you get us there, and it'll be in your audio feeds uh, on that side, um, like normal on Tuesday morning. So our President's Tuesday, Day too. Yeah, our Tuesday episode, one twenty p.m. Central Monday. Monday is President's Day. Maybe some trivia. Theo Epstein uh, nuggets and trivia. Um, I know Sam's going to have some presidential trivia as well. Absolutely. Uh, we might go over some lineups, some rotations, some 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 bullpen, um, a lot of Q and A on the show, especially the latter part of the show, just interacting with fans. Um, but the Locked On Cubs Spring Training Party, uh, one twenty Monday as we get ready for baseball season as uh, Monday officially opens camp for everybody uh, for the Cubs and around baseball. So really looking forward to that. We'll push that out after we Jimmy record Carter, here. Jimmy Carter in hospice right now, the longest living president, 98 years old. Yes, I did see that actually just before we uh, we press record today. Be sure to press the subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube. Smash the like button and all your favorite Locked On Cubs content. Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, and more on that audio side, and you can drop us a text this week, 312-834-4634. Thanks for making Locked On Cubs your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On MLB Prospects, where host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. Locked On MLB Prospects, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. He's Sam Olver. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked On Cubs.